Well, it's called a food desert, an area, whether rural or urban, where fresh food is simply unavailable. While inconvenient for some, for others, food deserts can contribute to everything from a neighborhood's decline to malnutrition and even obesity. Today, we focus on a growing phenomenon in Oklahoma and the work going on to turn that trend around. It's the end of the growing season in this neighborhood garden. It tastes real good, especially when they're fresh picked radishes, they're real hot. <laughs> Russell and his brother Reuben have spent much of their summer picking vegetables they planted themselves. Instead of going to the store and pick, get and buying the groceries, you can come out here and get it freshly picked. Made possible by a program called Food for Life. So we're doing this all over Tulsa area. It's behind schools, it's behind churches, it's in communities, neighborhoods. Right here. Stephen Everly is the fruit. project well, coordinator. In case if the blossom doesn't drop off, then it it's gets Food wet. for Life, it's, it's a program that Indian anyway. Healthcare applied for through a grant, three grants actually. It's called Food for Life. We're using USDA money, CDC money, and tobacco settlement money combined together for a three-year program, which we're ending food deserts in many neighborhoods and also providing food security for many individuals. Those are good. By helping families grow for their own table. Yolanda Van Prague is Russell and Ruben's mother. It's less expensive and fresh fruits, vegetables are always better for you. And for many low-income neighborhoods, hard to find. These gardens are located in a food desert, an area that lacks convenient access to nutritious food. Food Desert is a neighborhood where there's literally no place to find real food or whole food. That there are only convenience stores and, and fast food chains. That there's no place to buy a loaf of bread, milk, cheese, meats, dairy, and fresh vegetables. They literally don't exist. Now for many neighborhoods here in Tulsa, finding a local grocery store can be about a 10 mile trip. Not a huge problem if you're driving in a car, but if you're dependent upon public transportation or on foot, it makes finding fresh food virtually impossible. Here in West Tulsa, where windows are replaced with wood and grocery stores are all but non-existent, the blue jackalope serves as sort of a food oasis in what was a food desert. I started observing people in the neighborhood who didn't have access to a supermarket. We lost two major size supermarkets within a, a 10 minute walk from here over the, over the course of a couple of years. So Scott sparked his entrepreneurial spirit and started the Blue Jackalope, a neighborhood market that's an oasis of fresh food and warm fellowship. When I found out that a lot of my neighbors on food stamps existed off of going to convenience stores for their food source, it really kind of hit home. Scott's managed to turn his store into a one-stop shop for this community. In addition to providing an array of essential groceries and local produce, it's also a deli, a coffee bar, and perhaps best of all, a central hub of social activity. They'll sit down at the table, it's a communal table, and they'll start conversations with people, and then they will do informal networking, and that has gotten people who are underemployed or unemployed in the neighborhood, day labor jobs. More than anything, it's just become a place where neighbors are meeting neighbors, whether within our community or, or across the broader scope of, of the city that we live in. A healthy corner store concept that could get a boost from the Oklahoma legislature. Representative Seneca Scott is co-author of a bill he hopes will help encourage private business to open corner stores in food desert neighborhoods. Is this a, an issue whose time has come? Well, I think it is, Rob. That's a really good question because we're seeing with obesity rates and with diabetes a strong connection between food options and our quality of our health in the state. What are you hoping to do this next legislative session? Well, first off, we're really looking in a study of how we can incentivize best grocery stores in Oklahoma that are healthy and accessible to both urban and rural populations. Because food deserts are not confined to just the inner city. Of Oklahoma's 77 counties, almost half are considered food deserts. All of these here in rural Oklahoma. 
and of these counties, nine are considered severe food deserts, which means it takes about a 10 mile trip to get to the local grocery store. And many of our rural residents are, uh, are elderly and also uh, lower income and we have higher poverty in rural populations. Doug Walton is with the Kerr Center for Sustainable Agriculture and showed members of a legislative interim study committee that in many ways rural Oklahoma has been hit the hardest. And, and transportation becomes a huge issue in rural counties as the distance from the store increases. And so the options that are left are often convenience stores um, or very small uh, grocer uh, type stores that lack selection and also tend to have higher prices. And while long stretches of road are often to blame in rural areas, it's the simple lack of transportation that limits others in Oklahoma City. Within the shadow of the state capitol, Kevin Johnson walks blocks past closed food stores to just pick up a bag of groceries. Well, yeah, they really kind of spread out around here. Ain't too many around here, so and not not really easy. You have to kind of just go go the ways, or whatever. And when on foot, that's not so easy. At the intersection of MLK and 23rd, you can hear the vibrance of the neighborhood. Hometown Market is one of the last grocery stores in this area. Inside, the aisles are bright and the food is fresh. Something store manager Chris Carter says has helped them succeed where others have not. Uh, we, we struggle hard and, and try hard to provide everything we can for a consumer that's looking for whatever product they may be looking for. Um, yes, I think we have a great produce department. Um, I think we have the freshest produce that any money can buy. So, and, and we work hard to do that, very hard. Carter says while he's proud of the fresh produce his store offers, he understands why some smaller retailers have abandoned the healthier fare. Ultimately, it's, it's a customer's choice. Um, you could provide them nothing but healthy foods, and that still doesn't mean they're going to buy it. We're killing ourselves in Oklahoma on the dollar menu. That's where we're eating, rich or poor, food stamps or not. We're eating processed food only, and it's killing us. We see children with type 2 diabetes that shouldn't have it at all, but they're obese. They're eating nothing but processed food full of sugars and salts, and, and, and that's the dilemma. A dilemma that like Eberly and others believe can be solved by one healthy corner store at a time. Because we're talking about people in a neighborhood that are young businessmen or had an idea but don't know how to go about financing and really don't have a secure business plan to go about starting this corner store, but they have a devotion and a mission to do it. We're finding those people and giving them that assistance in funding and that assistance in a business plan. It's a win-win with, uh, as with many of our local kind of food initiatives where you know, we, we have a lot of farmers in Oklahoma and uh, we have some very thriving markets in mostly urban and suburban areas and some of our rural areas. Um, but we, we also have um, people that lack access to good food, uh, homegrown or otherwise. And so connecting those dots. Back at the Blue Jack Lope, Scott hopes his store will become a source of positive change for this area and a place where local residents can go to get good knowledge about good nutrition. I think that a store like this, with the hands-on management and the hands-on approach, is a great vehicle for working on, on people's ideas about what food is, what's nutritious, what's healthy. It's really validating for me, I guess, to see people who are coming in with food stamps, using them for actual food items rather than just snack goods. Bringing a healthy change to neighborhoods across the state. Later this month, lawmakers will hold a full hearing on food deserts at our state capitol. We'll also be following this issue and update you as things do develop.